the former president of Liberia. Oh, Excellency Ellen Johnson Steve has just arrived. And so earlier on, we had the arrival of the the speaker, the vice president, and the members of the House of Representatives, including members of the House of Senate. All right.
Dr. Buffer Chambers, Speaker and Presiding Officer of this Joint Legislative Section, Her Excellency Madam Joa Howard Taylor, Vice President of the Republic of Liberia, President of the Liberian Senate, honored to announce that there is a quorum for the transaction of this joint legislative business for the sole purpose of receiving the President's first annual message. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. Honorable ladies and gentlemen of the 54th Legislature, a unanimous vote to resolve into the joint section for the sole purpose as stated earlier of is resolved the 54th legislature is hereby resolved into said joint section to receive the president of Liberia His Excellency George Weir the annual message for the year 2018 and it is hereby so ordered Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I ask the Joint Executive Committee of the both houses to go and meet His Excellency President George Manuia to be escorted into the Joint Chambers. Okay, and so the the members of the Executive Committee of both houses, the House of Senate and the House of Representatives, have been asked by the Speaker of the Honorable Liberian House of Representatives to go downstairs and meet the President of Liberia and have him escorted to the Joint Chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature here on Capitol Hill and so we see members of the committees moving down to receive the President of the Republic of Liberia His Excellency George Mane Ware and so Hot TV Channel 12 is coming to you live from the Joint Chambers here at the a capital where His Excellency uh, President Joshua will be addressing this country, Liberia, in accordance with Article 58 of the 1986 Constitution. And it is required that the President on the fourth working Monday of January address the nation to include the the entire state of the nation, the economic condition. He will also talk about the security and everything that has to do with our country. And so we hear uh, what you continue to see is protocol officers uh, standing. You also see lawmakers, both from the House of Representatives and the Honorable House of Senate, they here present in the Joint Chambers of the Capitol Building here on Capitol Hill. The name is Kai Oliver Kai. Hot TV Channel 12 is bringing you this all-important program marking the first 
the State of the Nation address by His Excellency George Manawir. And so the the main team of the Emphasis of Liberia are playing a selection. Do you have any selection being played? As we await the, the members of the committee on executive to usher in the president of our country. And so we see the former president of Liberia, Her Excellency Madam Ellen Johnson Salif, the members of the bench of the Supreme Court of Liberia. We also see the speaker and vice president having a tele tete discussion. Senate Pro Temporary Honorable Abbott Tugachie is also there. And so the Vice President is seated between the Senate Pro Temporary and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And so Honorable Edwin Mervyn Snow, Honorable Dr. Buffett Chimas, the Vice President of Liberia, having this all-important uh, all intelligent discussion. And so we, we aim the Joint Chimas of the Honorable uh, Liberian uh, Legislature, members of the Supreme Court uh, here, Okay, so beautiful melody being produced there by the band team of the Armed Forces of Liberia as they are all here with their brass band uh, producing those sounds you hear it. If you're watching us across the globe, we ask you to share this broadcast. Uh, we sincerely apologize for the technical problem earlier on. Uh, this is not our making. This is what we have in our country uh, as it relates to technology. But again, we, we're glad that we are back on. Uh, and so we are waiting the members of the committee or an executive as they will uh, soon be arriving with the uh, president of Liberia as he will be escorted to the joint chambers of the honorable Liberian legislature. So our TV channel 12, kind all of a kind with the commentary Nick Sieber behind the cameras, uh, Joseph Do, making sure all of the technical jobs, all of the the visual production is done and given to you clearer. Officers of the Armed Forces of Liberia playing some traditional Liberian rhythm, Siolele, and that is the song you're listening to.
Okay, so the members of the armed forces of Liberia band team continue to entertain the guests, to entertain the VIPs here as they gradually and patiently await the arrival of His Excellency President George Weah. Uh, like we've said earlier, the head of state the former head of state, as a matter of fact, uh, Her Excellency Alan Johnson Salif is here. Uh, former President Salif turned over power uh, to His Excellency Joshua on the 22nd of this month at the uh, Samuel Kayando Sports uh, Complex. And today, President Weir is expected to address the nation in his first State of the Nation address to the people of this country via the 103 members of the House of Representatives and the House of Senate. Excellency President George Manawea, as he's expected to address the nation during the course of this weekend. Uh, we intend to see a lot of uh, appointments done earlier on during the course of uh, last week. We had several nominations, and that was happening when the head of state of our country was in Ethiopia at his first uh, AU summit where he com committed Liberia's uh, effort uh, to ensuring that corruption is fought in Africa and making the government of Liberia no exception. And so we're here at the Joint Chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature where President Ellen Johnson Sely, former President Sely is here. We have members of both houses, the House of Senate and the House of Representatives. We have foreign guests, dignitaries. We also see ministers destined or making their way to this all important program when President Joshua will be delivering his first State of the Nation address. Kind Oliver Kind is my name. Hot TV Channel 12 is the institution and together we 
uh, going to bring you every visual uh, content you need to know uh, from your end. So continue watching. We also ask you to share this broadcast. And so the Airville, the, the band team of the Armed Forces of Liberia got a way of inspiring Liberians and our foreign partners whenever we had a situation of a national occasion. Uh, they will always play the, the old and traditional songs of Liberia. And so that song is Tomorrow I'm Going Home. Uh, that song uh, reminds a lot of Liberians about our our war days when Liberians had to go in to seek refuge in other countries and so there came a time where uh, we had stability returning to our country and there was a need for people to come back to Liberia there was a need for people to be uh, more concerned about coming back to build this country and so this song tomorrow I'm going home it's so so beautiful. Enjoy. And so you, you're seeing the members of the Armed Forces of Liberia band team, they're playing some rhythms for the guests here and very important personalities here in the Joint Chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature. This program is coming to you via Hot TV Channel 12. Many thanks to our Our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Bernard Blue Benson, and the rest of the team making sure that this production is brought. Mr. Stone Gray, Mr. Cypher the King, the rest of the, the technical staff, Nick Siebel is here behind the cameras. Joseph Doe is making sure all of the technical activities here. are set off. James Colley is also on the team and kind all of a kind. I'm here making sure we have the commentary of every little thing happening here. And so the AFL continue to do what they know how to do best and to entertain the crowd where we have uh, this room already already occupied with the uh, the need I guess you need their occupants. Okay, and so that is Coco Lioko chicken, the crow for the day. And like I said earlier, President Ellen Johnson Salib is certainly in the, the building. She's in the joint chambers waiting to see and to hear what her, her successor would definitely uh, tell this country via the members of the House of Representatives and the House of Senate.
and so there you see the president of Liberia and you see the members of the Honorable Supreme Court of Liberia they are all here seated and so this is a full house the entire government of Liberia is here this is where we have the, the, the vice president Her Excellency Madam Joa Howard Taylor we have the speaker of the house of representative representative Dr. Buffer Chambers we have the pro tempore of the honorable Liberian senate honorable Abbott Tupachie of Grand Cru County we also have the chief justice and members of the supreme court of Liberia and so we also have representatives from the 73 districts in Liberia and senators from the 30 counties in our country and so this is the entire government with only one person left the head of state commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Liberia and president of the Republic of Liberia His Excellency George Manawea He's the only one we are awaiting here so as to have this all important program get started but again we told by four o'clock his excellency president george Madawia is expected to be in the joint chambers of the honorable house of legislature to present to the liberian people the current state of the nation So, like I said earlier, or the band team of the Empress of Liberia got a way of entertaining Liberians and foreign guests every time they give in the opportunity to perform. And so we still arrive, awaiting the arrival of the Chief Executive of Liberia, the Chief Executive Officer, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Liberia the head of state and president of the Republic of Liberia His Excellency George Mane where and so we are still in the joint chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature and as soon as the the committees on one executive arrives here in the joint chambers with the president of Liberia the protocol officer will have it announced but we see 
former President Salif in a tete a tete discussion with uh, a justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Kabina Jan is there, uh, Justice Siena Yu is also there, uh, James Etta Wolokoli, Justice James Etta Wolokoli is also here, uh, the Chief Justice, Justice Philip Eze Banks is also here, and so uh, this is very, very historic. This is a historical moment when uh, the former president will have to sit in in chambers uh, to uh, actually hear uh, the the current president deliver the state of the nation address. I think uh, if you cannot take anything from us as Liberians during this stage period and age, I think you got to take the fact that we've transitioned into a people ready for business into a country prepared for the foremost of uh, the developmental agenda ahead uh, thereby but again we we stay here kind all of a kind hot tv channel 12 and we encourage you to share this broadcast if you're watching locally via hot tv channel 12 we also ask you to call your friends uh, to join you in watching this all important live broadcast here from the joint chambers of the honorable house of legislature we also on satcom uh, channel 6 on satcom uh, channel 12 uh, locally if you are watching us from our uh, uh, traditional cable uh, television cable you can watch us on hot tv channel 12 we also on satcom on channel 6 we on nanasat and this uh, broadcast has been relayed by uh, several uh, media institutions across the globe early on uh, during the inauguration we had several media institutions including state media state broadcaster uh, uh, relaying our our broadcast but again we're here we're doing the Liberian people's job making sure that we we have the speech of His Excellency President George Weir delivered to the people of Liberia and the world over uh, through the members of the, the Honorable House of Senate and members of the Honorable House of Representative. And so what you see on your cameras is protocol officers, officers of the executive protection service we also have members of the legislative security team here and so we are we here my time uh, my time says it's two minutes past four o'clock uh, this is almost an unusual the time is two minutes past four o'clock and we stay awaiting the arrival of uh, the, the president of the Republic of Liberia His Excellency George Manawer and so we are here waiting for the VIP to arrive we also see uh, foreign uh, dignitaries here they are also here making sure that they be part of this historic moment when a former president of Liberia will wait and patiently watch the current president deliver the State of the Nation address. This is so awesome. This is very, very wonderful. This is beautiful. This is a country ready for business. But again, we have uh, four minutes past four o'clock and up to now we stay await the arrival of President George Mane where
And so the president of our, our country is on his way. We are waiting him. But while we are in the process of awaiting the president, we see the the speaker of the House of Representatives, Speaker Buffer Chambers, seated in his presiding seat, being flanked by the Vice President of Liberia, Her Excellency Madam Joel Howard Taylor. And so as soon as we receive signal of the arrival of the President on the grounds of the Capitol, we're going to have you informed. But up to now, exactly five minutes past five o'clock, we stay awaiting the arrival of His Excellency George Ware. So you see Dr. Buffett Chambers and the Vice President of Liberia and Head of the Liberian Senate, Her Excellency Madam Chief Swakoko Joa Howard Tiller is also there. Next to the Vice President is the pro tempore of the Honorable Liberian Senate, Honorable Abbott Tubachie. And so we see three counties, three counties together seated right here Maryland County, Bone County, and Grand Cru County. Uh, Representative and Speaker of Bofachimas uh, representing Maryland County. Vice President and Head of the Liberian Senate, Her Excellency Joel Howard Taylor, representing Bone County, and Honorable Abbott Tubachie, the pro temporary of the Liberian Senate, representing Grand Cru County. And so there you see the combination of three counties. We also see the, the Justices of the Honorable Supreme Court of our country, and Her Excellency Ellen Johnson Salif, Liberia's former president, beautifully dressed and uh, holding her hands and just thinking, what is the president uh, <laughs> waiting for? I know she's thinking, uh, you know, doing my days. By now, I'm in the building. Hey, probably something is going on. But we uh, we here still patiently awaiting the arrival of His Excellency President George Ware. So, <laughs> whenever I see the president, the former president of our country, as a matter of fact, I'm so happy. What comes to my mind is so much joy. Not for anything else, but for the fact that as a country, we can now sit and see our former president breathing the air of freedom, you know. Again, the Vice President is comfortably seated in the middle uh, between the pro temporary of the Liberian Senate and the Speaker of the Liberian House of Representatives. So Dr. Buffett Chibas is having a tele -tete discussion with the, uh, the Chief Clerk of the Republic of Liberia, the, the Chief Clerk of the House of Representatives, the Republic of Liberia. But again, we Oh my word, we we having some technical adjustments here. We having some technical adjustments here. All right, so I think it's it's set up now. We see members of the the bench of the Supreme Court of Liberia trying to fend themselves manually using. <laughs> using the uh, <laughs> wow 
and I'm told I'm told the the president will will soon arrive but while we are in the process of awaiting his excellency the president Joshua we are we're going to bring you every every visual visual So, yeah. so we are we are here waiting. The members of the armed forces of Liberia band team they are all quiet. They stop playing the rhythms. We see the protocol officers moving here and there. We see officers of the Executive Protection Service also moving around, and so folks, I think we're close to that moment when the President of Liberia will be arriving here in the Joint Chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature, but from where we are, we have not gotten uh, the signal that the VIP is here and so we we see we see a journalist of the I mean journalist assigned to the executive mansion entering this uh, podium the uh, band team of the armed forces of Liberia they are standing and I and I'm sure now if at any moment for now the president will be arriving making a time nine minutes past four o'clock uh, here from the joint chambers of the honorable uh, house of uh, legislature here on capitol hill in monrovia liberia and so folks hot tv channel 12 is coming to you via your browser via your your television set if you're watching us online via Facebook we encourage you to share uh, this or important broadcast if you're watching us locally via the traditional cable television we ask you Mr. Speaker Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen the President of the Republic of Liberia so the protocol officer have announced the arrival of the president of Liberia, His Excellency George Mane Weir. And I see uh, Representative Mona Peno Youngblood. She's the one you see in there. Representative Mona Peno Youngblood. And so we stay awaiting that moment when His Excellency President George Weir will walk into the joint chambers of the honorable house of legislature hot tv channel 12 kind all of a kind together we here having a wonderful time where liberians from all walks of life have come the president and there is here his excellency all right and so the the members of the the committees and so President Joshua has arrived dressed up in his his suit with a red tie as he's been
national team of Liberia being played by the Armed Forces of Liberia and President George Rea is now on the podium. Manuia, the Homo 
107 took the oath for the office and was sworn in as the 24th president of the Republic of Liberia in the presence of most, if not all of you, as soon that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of Liberia. And in this process, I ask the Almighty God to help me to do so to the best of my ability. And in this is exactly what I intend to do. The Liberian Constitution, which is the supreme law of the Republic, and with which I am intimately familiar, shall be my principal guide for leadership and governance throughout my tenure as president. Without pretending to be a constitutional scholar, expert, or lawyer, I found direction as well as inspiration for studying it. I will humbly advise all of you, honorable ladies and gentlemen, and indeed all Liberians to study your constitution well. For I found it to be the most useful, practical guide for those who, who govern and for those who are governed. My assumption, my assumption is that not everyone is familiar with the Constitution, as they ought to be. I will not beg your indulgence to allow me to make frequent references to it today as I address you. In some instances, I will read extensively on it. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, what is expected of us who have been elected by our people to govern them? What is really expected of those of us who have been entrusted with the responsibility to lead them? The answer is to be found in chapter 2 of our Constitution which I shall now read selected article extensively and verbatim in a quote chapter 2 general principles of national policy article 4 the principles contained in this chapter shall be fundamental in the governance of the republic and shall serve as guidelines in the formation, in the formulations of legislative, executive, administrative directives, policy making, and their execution. Article 5. The Republic shall aim at strengthening the national integration and unity of the people of Liberia, regardless of ethnic regional and other differences into one body politics. And the legislature shall enact laws promoting national unification and the encouragement of all citizens to participate in government. B. Preserve, protect, and promote positive Liberian culture ensuring that traditional values which are compatible with public policies and national progress are adapted and developed as an integral part of the growing needs of the Liberian society. C. Take steps by appropriate legislation and executive order to eliminate sectionalism and tribalism and such abuses of power as the misuse of government resources, nepotism, and all other corrupt practices. Article 6. The Republic shall, because of the vital role assigned 
to the individual citizen under this constitution for the social, economic, and political well-being of Liberia, provide equal access to educational opportunities and facilities for all citizens to the extent of available resources, emphasis shall be placed on the mass education of the Liberian people and the elimination of illiteracy. Article 7. The Republic shall consist the Republic shall consist with the principles of individual freedom and social justice enshrined in this constitution. Manage the national economy and the natural resources of Liberia in such manner as shall ensure the maximum feasible participation of Liberian citizens under conditions of equality so as to advance the general welfare of the Liberian people and the economic development of Liberia. Article 8. The Republic shall direct its policy towards ensuring for all citizens without discrimination opportunities for employment and livelihood on a just and humane conditions and towards promoting safety, health and welfare facility in employment. Nine, the Republic shall encourage the promotion of bilateral and regional cooperation between and among Liberia and other nations and the formation and maintenance of regional organizations aimed at the cultural, social, political, and economic development of the people of Africa and other nations of the world. 10. The Republic shall ensure the publication and dissemination of this constitution throughout the Republic and the teaching of its principles and provisions in all institutions of learning in Liberia. Unquote. Honorable ladies and gentlemen of the 54th legislature, this is the backdrop against which the legislative program of my administration shall be proposed for your time for celebration. <laughs> And you will soon discover upon closer examination that chapter 2 of our constitution forms the essential framework for the formulation of the political manifesto and platform upon which I and many of you ran and won during the just and the elections. It is customary that the State of Nation address gave an account of the president's stewardship of the government for the previous year and then set out his legislative agenda for the ensuing section. Additionally, the president is expected to present the overall economic condition of the nation which should cover both expenditure and revenue. In this regard, as I have been president for only one week. In this regard, as I have been president for only one week, I cannot be expected to report with authority on the expenditure and income of the government of Liberia for the previous year. <laughs> Thank you. Which one, Minister, honor my predecessor? Of course, during the transition process, certain information has been provided to us on both income and expenditure. Continuing balances, which we now inherit to carry forward. Total revenue collected 
in calendar year 2017 amounted to 489.1 million US dollars, which is a 13% decline over revenue collected in 2016, which was 565.1 million. I cannot vouch for the accuracies of completeness of this information. <laughs> In the absence, in the absence of verification by a full and proper audit conducted by a competent authority. This highly unusual situation is caused by the delays in the recent electoral process, which have the effect of reducing the transition period from three months to three weeks. Nevertheless, and in spite of the above described situation, it is possible to inform you that the state of the economy that my administration has inherited leaves a lot to be done and to be desired. This is plain for all to see, but we are all affected by it. Our economy is broken. Our government is broke. Our currency is in free fall. Inflation is rising. Unemployment is at an unprecedented high, and our foreign reserves are at an all-time low. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, this is the challenge that we face. In order to overcome these constraints and revise this trend, we, the executive, will have to work in close collaboration with you, the legislation, a separate but coordinate branches of government to find solutions to these obstacles to our progress and development. During the course of this session, we shall propose and introduce priorities legislation for your consideration and approval that will be based on the four pillars of our platform, namely one, power to the people. <laughs> we shall focus on reviews and revisions of our education system, improve health and sanitation, promote and strengthen gender equality and provide for youth reorientation, empowerment through training of all kinds, the creation of jobs, and expansion of sports. As Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. The improvement of our education system is and shall remain the constant and major priority during my administration. For example, I made a promise that my government will absorb the wise fee for all 12 graders, and I remain committed to that promise. <laughs> My government has already started to disburse these fees by committing an initial amount of 200,000 United States dollars 
in consultation with my predecessor. Thank you, Madam. Number two, economic jobs. We will introduce new legislation and policy which will be intended to achieve sustainable economic growth, develop and expand agriculture, and address our very large infrastructure deficit with particular emphasis on road construction and the provision of affordable and adequate electricity for all our people. Number three, sustaining the peace. Under this bill, we shall examine ways to improve the judicial system to ensure that the basic rights of all Liberians are protected. <laughs> to that end, we will propose legislation that will be intended to create new processes and revenues and avenues to ensure that all our people are fully reconciled. In terms of security and defense, we rely on our budgetary support to enable us to continue to improve the professional and operational development of the armed forces of Liberia and other security agencies in order to better prepare them to participate in the fight against global terrorism. In this regard, we will especially focus on the hostage constraint faced by our security personnel. Number <laughs> four, governance and transparency. We will request you to draft a legislation that will focus on the decentralization of institutions and systems of governance review and build upon the current code of conduct in order to increase accountability of public officials and reduce the incidence of corruption. In an effort to make government more efficient, we we'll submit to you a draft legislation to restructure the cabinet of the executive branch to make our ministry more effective in addressing the specific requirements of our various sectors. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, what I have just presented to you is a broad and general indication of our legislative program. However, and more specifically, I would like to inform you that my immediate strategy for reducing poverty, increasing youth empowerment through job creation and training, improving the productivity of our economy, is to embark upon the comprehensive road and highway construction program that will link all counties, capital with all weather, paid primary roads. They will be built to the highest international standard. <laughs> and link to build secondary farm to market road that will enhance agriculture, trade, and tourism in Liberia. Particular priority will be given to a coastal highway that will run from Bikana to Hapo. This will eventually end the complete isolation of the southeastern region, Liberia. The condition that have existed since the formation of this country. There is a medium term project will take several years to complete, but it is the intention of my government to prioritize the planning and raising of funding for this important development goal, which has been estimated to the cost approximately $3 billion. 
nicely done. This is going to be very challenging, but I am convinced that with the assistance of my friendly government and institution, this can be achieved before the end of my tenure. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to address you on what I consider to be my most urgent and imperative agenda. Since the founding of this country in 1847, more than 170 years ago, there have been certain restrictions on citizenship and property ownership that, in my view, have become serious impediment to the development and progress of the country. This restriction includes the limitation of citizen owners to be black people, the limitation of property ownership exclusively to citizens, and the non-alliance of dual citizenship. The framework of the 1847 Constitution may have every reason and justification to include these restrictions in that historic document in their own words, and I quote, the great object of forming these colonies being to provide home for the despair and oppressed children of Africa and to regenerate and enlighten this benefited continent. None but persons of color shall be admitted to citizenship in this republic. They are free slaves for pleading from the oppressive yoke of slavery imposed upon them by white owners, white slave owners. They therefore wanted Liberia to be a refuge and a heaven for free men of color. And so they restricted citizenship only to black people. This may have been appropriate for the 19th century and for the threats and conditions that existed at that time. However, here in the 21st century, I am of the view that these threats no longer exist. And that these, condi these conditions have changed. In these circumstances, it is my view that keeping such a clause in our constitution is unnecessary, racist, and inappropriate for the place that Liberia occupies today in the Committee of Nations. <laughs> It also contradicts the very definition of Liberia, which is, which is derived from the Latin word, labor, meaning liberty. I believe that we should have nothing to fear from people of any other race becoming citizens of Liberia. One, they conform to the requirements of our immigration and naturalization laws. They may be appropriately amended to address this new situation. In fact, we have everything to gain if we look in our region among the other member states of Equus, especially our neighbors in La Côte d'Ivoire. And Ghana, it will soon be observed that permitting people of other races to be considered as not marginal blacks, they are indigenous. I believe that this is an enormous 
that should not have formed its way into the 1986 Constitution, Chapter 4, Article 27. I therefore strongly recommend and propose respectfully that consideration should be given to removing it by appropriate measures provided for in our laws for amending the Constitution, Chapter 12. Restoration of land ownership exclusive to citizens. The second provision in our constitution, which stands today to impede our progress and stone our growth and development in the restriction of land ownership only to Liberian citizens. Article 22A. No foreign investor. In fact, not any investor will be willing to make significant direct investment in our country if they cannot own property in fee simple. Furthermore, direct investment plays on lease property are virtually unbankable because most banks are reluctant to accept leasehold as collateral for loan to persons and business entity, a project that could be very well enhance our development and create jobs for our people. It is inconsistent with my pronouncement that Liberia is open for business. While at the same time, Denying those who hear our call and come to Liberia to invest when they are prevented from owning property because of their lack of Liberian citizenship. Liberian citizenship, Liberian citizens are free to purchase property in any other country. A non citizen, yet our constitution and laws would not allow similar privilege to be accorded to citizens of other nations. I therefore strongly recommend that this restriction be removed and that the appropriate rules and regulations of the Land Commission and other relevant agencies be amended and strengthened to accommodate this new development if approved by referendum. Those of this issue. The third matter of concern to me is the restriction placed in our constitution on Liberians holding dual citizenship. I believe that most Liberians who are also citizens of another country probably acquire the additional nationality as a means to escape from the terrible atrocity which characterized our civil conflict and for economic survival in their new countries of residence. If, if as a condition, precedent for another country to grant citizenship to these persons, they had to disavow their loyalty to Liberia and pledge allegiance to the laws of another country, then it will have been out of necessity rather than a matter of the heart. And if condition now exists in Liberia that make them want to return home and contribute a quarter to the development of our common patrimony, then I do not think that it is fair to treat them as non-citizens in their own land of trust. Many Liberians in the diaspora have heard my clear call to return home and bring their energies, skills, talent, and expertise, and join us in the building of a new Liberia. We need them. And so long as they were born in this country, 
They were Liberian first. And I believe that they should be welcomed back home with open hands. Whether or not they are required to renounce the adapter nationalities should be a matter of their conscience and the laws which govern their naturalization in their respective domicile. They should be free to make those choices and decisions. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware that the Constitutional Review Committee was recently established during the previous administration to review these issues. Among others, the report was presented to the executive who then duly forwarded it to you for your consideration and to the best of my knowledge. It is still a table and waiting your actions. Our people spoke. Our people spoke. <laughs> However, some of the provisions that were agreed upon are not, in my view, in the interest of future peace and sustainable economic growth of our nation. If we must build a new Liberia that will unite us all and open our doors to investors, then I will respectfully request, ladies and gentlemen, that you revisit the work of the Commission in light of new and existing realities in the best interest of our people and our nation. Honorable members of the 54th legislature, with the assess assessment that I gave you earlier on the poor condition of our economy, I believe that it is appropriate that we should all make sacrifices in the interest of our country, Mama Liberia, according to Article 60 of the Constitution. The salaries of the president and the vice president are established by the legislature and cannot be increased or reduced during the period for which they are elected. However, in view of the very rapidly deteriorating situation of the economy, I am informing you today with immediate effect that I will reduce my salary and benefit by 25% and give, and of the legislature to follow suit in reducing uh, some of uh, their, I mean, reducing their salaries and uh, immunities. But again, he's been applauded. And let's follow uh, the head of state of our country as he delivers his first state of the nation address. In the meantime, I will ask you, honorable ladies and gentlemen, to follow my lead in the interest of our constituents. And so, in Honorable ladies and gentlemen of the 54th legislature, let us all remember that we were elected to serve the Liberian people and now to be master of them. Let us all strive to practice servant leadership whereby all that we do inside and outside 
these chambers as elected leader shall be for the benefit of the Liberian people by whose mandate we have been given this responsibility to lead them and this opportunity to serve them. Let us all exert our best effort to ensure that in the cause of the people, let the struggle end. Thank you. All right, and so uh, you've just uh, listened to the president of Liberia, His Excellency President George Manawea, deliver his first state of the nation address. And the main team of the armed forces of Liberia playing the national anthem of Africa's odious republic, the Republic of Liberia. So the, the national anthem there uh, played by the officers of the armed forces of Liberia. We ask that all of us remain standing as the committee escorts His Excellency the President to a holding room as we all proceed to the rotunda for the reception. And so the ushers will the guide VIPs. You and we'll have you seated for the reception. After we'll now move over to the rotunda of the, the Capitol building the here on Capitol Hill in Monrovia. You're watching Hot TV Channel 12 and coming to you uh, from the John Chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature here in Monrovia, where President Joshua delivered his first State of the Nation address to the people of Liberia via the 103 members of the House of Representatives and House of Senate. The name is Kain Oliver Kain, Hot TV Channel 12. We stay here as the lawmakers, the VIPs, and I see President Ellen Johnson Salif, a former President Salif, as she's standing, as she's patiently waiting to have a hug with President Joshua and so we see the former president and current president of this country uh, having a warm hug a uh, visit so unique to the format of our country this is one thing that we have not had in our country for so so long and I think Liberia is making the right decisions I think Liberia uh, has transitioned from that stage where we were looked down upon and no matter our diversity, no matter where we come from as a people, be it religious, be it cultural, be it our... It's now moving to the rotunda of the Capitol building for the executive refreshment here. What a, a brilliant speech it was. What a brilliant address to the nation. And seats. so the session will now be adjoined by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. His, uh, I almost said His Excellency, but Dr. Buffett Chimas, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, will now adjoin this session so as to have the, all, the other lawmakers go into the rotunda of the Capitol to have their refreshment. But what we see is uh, several uh, several invitees standing having the some uh, personal discussions and the, the speaker is now calling for order so as, to have, and gentlemen. so as to have this all important session enjoy ladies and gentlemen of the 54th legislature having
Having exhausted the singular purpose of today's event, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn this joint legislative session. Honorable Yombri Kanga. Motion. And so, Honorable Yombri Kanga Lawrence of Grandbasa County has been asked to give a motion to adjourn this session. And she was asked by Representative Dr. Buffer Chambers, the Speaker of the 54th uh, House of Representatives. And so, Senator Yomli Kanga Lawrence, the wife of Representative Ida Lawrence of uh, the Mosserado County District Number 15, he is a representative. Why, Honorable Yomli Kanga Lawrence is the Senator of Grand Bassa County. So, she will now make the motion. Mr. Speaker and members of the House of Representatives. Okay, so we we still await the the session to be adjourned by <laughs> the the members of the uh, the House of Representatives and that of the Senate. But the president, the former president of Liberia, Mr. is making Speaker a way of out of the joint chambers. Mr. President, pro tempore, and my distinguished colleagues, after we have accomplished. Convening this session for the delivering of this encouraging first annual message by President George Manuel I, Senator Yombi Kanga Lawrence from Grand Vassar County, move if I can obtain a second that this joint session be adjourned. So the motion to adjourn the session was made by Grand Bassa County, County. Uh, Senator Yombi Kanga Lawrence and Representative Speaker, Edwin Snow of Wome County will second the motion. Having listened to the motion for adjournment, which is undebatable, I do hereby second the motion. So the motion was seconded by Representative Edwin Snow of Wome County and Speaker Buffer Chambers will now test the motion and have it passed. I will... Now, having heard the motion being made and seconded, I would like to adjoin this joint legislative session, and it is hereby so ordered. Wow. Uh, anyway. But I see a shift in uh, the parliamentary proceedings here because I think when the motion is made and seconded, it has to be tested on the floors for uh, like members to, our guests to vote in favor of the motion or against. But I didn't see that. The the speaker you will be uh, quickly uh, joined the motion. Uh, anyway, uh, this is where we are. Uh, this is Liberia. So is the situation and so is the country. But again, we are still at the joint chambers of the Honorable House of Legislature where President George Weir just delivered his first state of the nation address, a promising Acosta Road from the, the coast of Bassa to the coastal city of Harper promising the connection of uh, several roads in the country from farm to market he talked about making sure that the entire southeastern part of Liberia that was caught up from the rest of Liberia in the past will be settled and so we keep listening we keep listening here so so the the song uh, they ever been played uh, the members of the armed forces of Liberia uh, play several several rhythms as they anticipate to certainly definitely uh, 
uh, entertain the folks here. And so it has been a very, very, very wonderful presentation. Uh, we've been here, Hot TV, uh, Channel 12, kind, all of a kind, making sure that we have this all important program cover and brought to you via your television, via Facebook, and every other means you watch us through. So we want to say thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again at another historic and an important occasion, this has been the production of One Media Housing Cabaret at True Hot TV Channel 12, your own traditional and favorite television station in Liberia. Keep watching Hot TV. God bless you.